This presentation is part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given on this slide. In the presentation that follows, I'll be giving a short demonstration on the use of Git. In what follows, I'm going to give a simple demonstration of using the Git software. So the first thing that I need to do as a user of Git is to perform some configuration. I need to set my username and my email address. So to do this, I use the git config command. So I'll use git config, and I specify the global option here because I want to set the username property for all of the repositories that I might be using, not just locally for one. And the value for this property that I want to set is my full name, Michael Adams, in quotes. And then I hit return. And next I'm going to set my email address. Again, using the git config command. So again, I want to set this value globally. And the particular property that I'm setting is user.email, my email address, which is just what's given in quotes here. And then I hit return. Now this configuration I only need to set up once, unless I want to change it later. Now I'm going to list the directory that I'm currently in. If I do this, you'll notice that there's a Git repository sitting here, this directory called example.git. This is a bare Git repository. The hint that this might be a bare repository is the extension .git on the directory name. The convention that's usually followed is if a Git repository, the directory name for a Git repository ends in .git, that is a bare repository. Again, a bare repository it's just a repository that has no working tree. In other words, you can't actually directly modify a bare repository by working it with it directly. What you have to do is clone it to another local copy, make changes to that local copy, and then push those changes back to the bare repository. Because again, the only way you can change a Git repository is by modifying the working tree. So if there isn't one, which is the case in a bare repository, you can't actually modify the repository directly. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the directory that I'm currently in just for convenience. So the pwd command just prints the current working directory and the syntax that I'm using here is just going to capture the output of that program and assign it to the variable top underscore dir. I'll use this variable occasionally later in this demo. So the first thing that we want to do if we want to actually start using it in some kind of useful way is we need to clone a repository. So I'm going to clone the repository that we were just looking at, the example.git and make my own local copy of it. And to do this, I use the git clone command. So the first parameter for the clone operation is the repository that I want to clone. So example.git is the bare repository that already exists. And the second parameter here is the directory that I want to clone into. So it's going to create a directory called example. So if I hit return here, and then list the directory after doing this, you'll notice now there's an example directory appearing here. So this was created by the clone operation, and this has the local copy of the repository for me to work with. So now I'm going to change directories to the directory example. And if I look at what's in here, you'll see that there's two files. There's a readme file output here. It's just saying that this directory contains source code for the classic hello world program written in Pascal. And then the other file, as you can probably guess, is just the hello world program written in Pascal. Now, if I want to make things a little bit more interesting, I can add the minus A option to ls. If I do this, this will list all of the files in the directory, including ones that start with dot. By convention, ls doesn't normally list the directories that start with a dot. Uh, the files dot and dot dot are just the current directory and its parent, which are not very interesting. But the interesting thing that appears here is the dot git directory. This directory is the directory that actually has all the files that maintain the state of the Git repository. Normally, you never directly modify anything under this directory. It's a bad idea because if you corrupt any of those files, you'll corrupt your Git repository and potentially lose everything that's in your repository. But nevertheless, that directory is there. If we continue along, I can use the git log command. What this does is it prints information about commits that have been made to the repository. And what I can see here is there's been one commit that's made. Uh, we can see who the author who made the commit was and the date that the commit was made and the actual commit log comment that was made at the time the commit was made. I can also use the git status command. This is a very useful command. What it does is it tells me what branch I'm working on. I'm working on the master branch. It also gives me some other information. It's saying that there's nothing to commit, so I've not made any changes that I might want to contemplate committing to the repository and so on. 
At this point, what I want to do is I want to make some changes to the repository you know, through my working tree that I'm looking at here. Essentially, what's in this directory here that I just listed is my working tree, which has two files. Uh, because I don't particularly like Pascal, because it's rather archaic, um, I'm going to create a, a C++ version of the Hello World program. So I want to create a new file called hello.cpp. So I'm going to uh, run my editor here and create a file called hello.cpp. And I'll just cut and paste the code for a very simple Hello World program into, here, into my uh, editor window. And I'm going to save this and exit from my editor. So now we have a file called hello.cpp in this directory. If I now run git status, the command that I ran before, you'll notice that things have changed a little bit in terms of the output. Now it's telling me that I have untracked files. I have untracked files here. In particular, I have this file hello.cpp, which is untracked. An untracked file is simply a file that's not currently under vision control. So git's basically ignoring anything that I do with it. But I want to actually add this to the repository, this new file that I've created. So the way that I do this is I have to move this change into the staging area or index as it's sometimes called. And this is accomplished through the git add command. So what I want to do is git add and then I specify the file that I want to, to add, which is hello.cpp and just hit return here. Um, now if I run git status again, I'll get a slightly different output from before. Now you'll notice that it's saying I have changes to be committed. In other words, there's things that I put into the staging area, again, sometimes called the index, um, which have not yet been committed. They're basically pending committing. And what I have currently is this new file called holo.cpp. So I have a new file that's basically waiting to commit, be committed, and next time I run git commit, that file will get put into the repository. This is not the only change I want to make. I also want to get rid of the hello.gas file the, basically this file right here, because again, Pascal is kind of archaic. I don't really want to have this, this uh, program here and written in this very archaic language, so let's get rid of it. Uh, so what I want to do in this case is I want to use the git rm command. So git rm uh, takes as a parameter whatever file we want to get rid of. So in this case, it's hello.pas. I hit return here. This will actually remove the file from my working tree. So if I list the directory now, hello.pas has been removed. However, it's not actually done anything in the repository or my staging area. If I run, or I should say the repository, it has changed my staging area. If I list the, uh, the status using git status, you'll see now that the changes that I have to be committed have changed slightly. Before I had hello.cpp, now I have a new change to be committed, which is the deletion of hello.pas. Again, these changes have not been made to the repository. They're only in the staging area, pending committal. The, the commit won't happen until I actually do a commit. Um, but they're pending being uh, propagated into the repository. So if I continue along here, I probably want to make another change here as well, because the readme file, if I look at the contents of it, it's not really appropriate anymore. It's saying that I have a program that's written in Pascal, but I just deleted that program and replaced it by one that's written in C++. So I'll just update the readme file to reflect the changes that I've made and say that the Hello World program is written in C++. And then I'll save this and exit my editor. Now if I run uh, git status at this point, I'll notice a slightly different message. It's going to now say that I have changes that are not staged for commit. In particular, the changes that I made to the readme file have not been staged. Uh, so if I want these changes to be eventually going into the repository, I have to stage them. So this is again done by the git add command. So I'm going to do um, git add readme like this. And so the this is going to stage the changes that I've made to the readme file so that the next time I do a git commit, they'll be propagated to the repository. Once I run this command, if I run git status again, it will change the status message. Now you'll see that the change to the readme file is now being listed under the category of changes to be committed. So it's pending committal. Up until this point though, I've not done anything that actually changed the repository. If I run git log and print the commits that are associated with the repository, you'll see there's still just the initial commit. So I've not actually changed anything in the repository. If I want to change something though, I need to run the git commit command. So this is what I'll do next. I'm going to run git commit, which will take everything that's in the staging area, all the changes that are listed above here, and it will put them into the repository. 
Now when I hit enter here, what's going to happen is Git is going to run my editor. And it will do this so that I can enter a commit message. I mean, the whole idea behind version control is you want to explain what changes you're making, be able to track what changes you're making to the code. So therefore, you want to be able to have the ability to give some descriptive comments saying, what are the, what are the nature of the changes that you've just made? So in this particular case, I might say something like uh, what I'm just about to paste in here. I replaced the Pascal version of the Hello World program with a C++ version and updated the readme file to reflect this change. So this is just describing the nature of the change that I've made. And then I'm going to save this and exit the editor. And when I do this, the commit will actually take place. So now the commit has happened. At this point, if I now run git log to see what commits are associated with the repository, now you'll see there's two commits. And in particular, there's this new commit here that wasn't there before. This is the new commit that I've just committed um, in the git commit command above. At this point, though, I've not done anything that actually changed the original repository that I cloned from. If you remember, there's actually two repositories involved in this exercise. There's the one that's called example, which is the one that I'm currently working on, my own local repository. But this was created by cloning the repository called example.git. What I want to do at this point, I'm just going to run a command that will show you the commits that are in this other repository, the one that I cloned from originally. So I'm using the git log command just to list all of the commits that are associated with that repository. The minus C option, the minus capital C option to this command here is just saying have git change its directory to this new directory here, top their example.git before running the git log command, before doing its thing basically. So instead of, if I just said git log without the minus C option, it would give the log information for the repository whose directory I'm currently in, which is my example repository, but I want the information for example.git, so I'm telling it to change to that directory first. I could cd to that directory and then run git and then cd back to this directory, but it's more convenient just to use the minus c option, then I don't have to keep changing directories. If I do this, you'll notice that there's only one commit that's listed here. This is the original commit that was in that repository. I've not actually changed the repository yet. So if I want to change the repository that I cloned from and actually propagate the changes in my own local repository called example into the repository called example.git, I do this by a git push operation. So I would say git push. And when I do this, what it's going to do is it's going to take all the changes that I've committed into my local copy of the repository. In other words, the, the one in the, associated with the example directory. And it's going to push them into the repository that I cloned from. So I'll just hit return here. Once I do this, if I then rerun the command that I just ran a moment ago and print out all the commits that are associated with the repository that I cloned from, now you'll see that there's two commits. In other words, the commit that I've just made to my own local copy has now been propagated to the other repository that I cloned from. In particular, this new change here has been propagated to the other repository.